Kingdom of the Silver Woods and the Magic of the Seven Stars. Once upon a time, in a mystical land called Ilarion, there was a kingdom known as the Silver Woods. This kingdom was famous for its silver leaf trees that sparkled like stars under the moonlight, casting a serene glow over the land. The heart of the Silver Woods was the magical Tree of Seven Stars, a magnificent tree whose branches reached towards the heavens and bore seven brilliant star-shaped fruits, each imbued with powerful magic. The kingdom was ruled by King Orion and Queen Seraphina, wise and compassionate rulers who were deeply loved by their people. They had two children, Prince Eric and Princess Alina, who were equally beloved for their virtues and kindness. Prince Eric, the elder, was known for his bravery and strength. He was a skilled swordsman and a natural leader, always ready to protect the kingdom. Princess Alina, the younger sibling, was gentle and wise, with a special talent for healing and communicating with the magical creatures of the Silver Woods. One fateful evening, a dark sorcerer named Malgor, who coveted the power of the seven stars, cast a sinister spell that caused the star fruits to wither and the tree of seven stars to lose its magic. The once bright silver woods began to fade, and the kingdom fell into despair. King Orion and Queen Seraphina called upon their children. Eric? Alina? The king began gravely. Malgor has stolen the magic of the seven stars. Our kingdom's future depends on restoring their power. You must embark on a quest to retrieve the lost magic and save the silver woods. We will do everything in our power to save our kingdom, Eric vowed, his eyes filled with determination. Alina nodded, her heart heavy with concern for the creatures and people suffering. We will restore the magic of the seven stars and bring light back to our land, she said. Accompanied by their loyal companions, Eric's fierce wolf, Shadow, and Alina's gentle unicorn, Luna, they set off on their quest. Their first destination was the enchanted lake where the water star had fallen. The lake, once crystal clear, was now murky and dark. As they approached, they met Marina, the guardian of water who was bound by Malgor's dark magic. To free me and restore the water star, you must retrieve the moonlit pearl from the depths of the lake, Marina said. It is guarded by a water serpent. Eric and Alina plunged into the lake, guided by Luna's luminous horn. They swam deeper, facing fierce currents and underwater obstacles. At the bottom, they found the moonlit pearl guarded by a fearsome water serpent. Eric, using his strength and agility, distracted the serpent while Alina used her soothing voice to calm it. They retrieved the pearl and returned to Marina. With the moonlit pearl, Marina's bonds were broken and the water star was restored. Thank you, brave children, Marina said. I will return to the Tree of Seven Stars and renew its magic. Next, they journeyed to the fiery mountains where the fire star had fallen. The mountains, once vibrant with lava flows, were now cold and lifeless. They encountered Ignis, the guardian of fire, imprisoned in a cage of ice. To free me and restore the fire star, you must retrieve the ember stone from the heart of the volcano, Ignis said. It is guarded by a fire dragon. Eric and Alina climbed the treacherous mountains, with Shadow leading the way and Luna providing light. Inside the volcano, they found the ember stone guarded by a massive fire dragon. Eric bravely confronted the dragon, using his sword to deflect its fiery breath, while Alina used a spell to shield them. Together, they retrieved the ember stone and freed Ignis. The fire star was restored, and Ignis's flames reignited the mountains. Thank you, brave children, Ignis said. I will return to the Tree of Seven Stars and rekindle its fire. Their journey then took them to the Whispering Forest, where the Earth Star had fallen. The forest, once lush and green, was now withered and silent. They found Terra, the guardian of Earth, trapped in vines of dark magic. To free me and restore the Earth Star, you must retrieve the Heartstone from the ancient oak, Terra said. It is guarded by a forest guardian. Eric and Alina ventured deep into the forest, guided by Shadow's keen senses. At the ancient oak, they encountered the forest guardian, a giant trant. Eric used his strength to fend off the trant's attacks, while Alina used her healing magic to purify the dark vines. They retrieved the heartstone and freed Terra. The earth star was restored and the forest began to flourish once more. Thank you, brave children, Terra said. I will return to the tree of seven stars and renew its strength. Next, they traveled to the sky temple where the air star had fallen. 
The temple, once surrounded by swirling winds and clouds, was now eerily still. They found Zephyr, the guardian of air, bound by chains of dark magic. To free me and restore the air star, you must retrieve the windstone from the highest tower, Zephyr said. It is guarded by a storm giant. Eric and Alina climbed the tower, facing powerful gusts and lightning strikes. At the top, they encountered the storm giant. Eric used his agility to dodge the giant's attacks, while Alina used her magic to calm the storm. They retrieved the windstone and freed Zephyr. The air star was restored and the winds began to blow once more. Thank you, brave children, Zephyr said. I will return to the Tree of Seven Stars and renew its breath. Their final destination was the Twilight Cave, where the remaining three stars had fallen. The cave, once filled with the glow of twilight, was now dark and foreboding. Inside, they found Luna, the guardian of light, bound by shadows. To free me and restore the remaining stars, you must retrieve the twilight crystal from the depths of the cave, Luna said. It is guarded by a shadow beast. Eric and Alina ventured into the cave, guided by Luna's light. They faced numerous challenges, including navigating through a maze of shadows and avoiding traps. At the heart of the cave, they encountered the shadow beast. Eric fought bravely, while Alina used her magic to create beams of light that weakened the beast. Together, they retrieved the twilight crystal and freed Luna. The remaining stars were restored, and the cave was once again filled with twilight's glow. Thank you, brave children, Luna said. I will return to the Tree of Seven Stars and restore its light. With all seven stars restored, Eric and Alina returned to the Silver Woods. The guardians of water, fire, earth, air, and light combined their powers to heal the Tree of Seven Stars. The tree's branches once again reached towards the heavens, and its star fruits glowed with magical brilliance. The kingdom of the Silver Woods was saved, and the people rejoiced. King Orion and Queen Serafina embraced their children, proud of their bravery and unity. The story of their heroic quest spread throughout the land, becoming a legend that inspired generations. Prince Eric and Princess Alina continued to protect their kingdom, always ready to face new challenges and adventures. Their bond grew stronger, and their love for their kingdom and its people only deepened. The Tree of Seven Stars, now fully restored, ensured that the Silver Woods would remain a land of beauty and magic forever. And so, the Silver Woods thrived, a kingdom of endless wonder, where the magic of the stars and the bravery of its heroes ensured peace and prosperity for all time. The End The Legend of the Crystal Waters and the Brave Siblings once upon a time, in a beautiful and enchanted land called Lumina, there was a kingdom known as Crystal Waters. This kingdom was famous for its breathtaking lakes and rivers that sparkled like diamonds under the sun. The heart of Crystal Waters was the Sacred Lake, a magical body of water that was said to grant visions, heal ailments, and bring prosperity to the land. The kingdom was ruled by King Cedric and Queen Alara, who were wise and beloved by their people. They had three children, Princess Aurora, Prince Thorn, and Princess Selene. Each of them possessed unique talents and qualities that reflected their love for the kingdom and its people. Princess Aurora, the eldest, was known for her courage and strength. She was a skilled warrior and a natural leader, always ready to protect the kingdom. Prince Thorn, the middle child, was a brilliant scholar with a deep understanding of magic and the ancient lore of Lumina. His curiosity and intellect made him the kingdom's foremost expert on magical phenomena. Princess Selene, the youngest, was kind-hearted and had a special connection with nature. She could communicate with animals and had a natural gift for healing. One fateful day, a dark sorceress named Morgath appeared in Lumina. She coveted the power of the sacred lake and sought to corrupt its magic for her own sinister purposes. Morgath cast a powerful spell that caused the lake's waters to darken and lose their enchanting glow. Without the lake's magic, the land began to wither, and the people of Crystal Waters fell into despair. King Cedric and Queen Alara summoned their children to the royal hall. Aurora, Thorn, Selene, the king said with grave concern, our kingdom is in great peril. The sacred lake has been corrupted by Morgath's dark magic. You must embark on a quest to restore its purity and save Crystal Waters. We will do everything in our power to save our kingdom, Aurora vowed, her eyes filled with determination. Thorn nodded, already thinking of ways to counter the dark magic. 
We will restore the lake's magic and bring peace back to Lumina, he said. Celine, her heart heavy with concern for the suffering animals and people, added, We will heal the lake and our land. Accompanied by their loyal companions, Aurora's fierce griffin, Skylar, Thorn's wise owl, Orion, and Celine's gentle deer, Luna, they set off on their quest. Their first destination was the Whispering Woods, where the guardian of the earth, an ancient tree spirit named Silva, resided. The woods were thick with dark magic, and the trees whispered warnings of Morgath's power. As they ventured deeper, they encountered enchanted creatures that had been twisted by the dark magic. Aurora used her skills to protect her siblings, while Thorn used his knowledge of spells to dispel the enchantments. Selene, with her gift for healing, soothed the creatures and restored them to their natural forms. At the heart of the woods, they found Silva, who was trapped in a cocoon of dark vines. To free me and restore the earth's magic, you must find the heartstone, Silva said. It is hidden deep within the forest, guarded by a powerful guardian. The siblings journeyed further into the forest, guided by Orion's keen senses. They faced numerous challenges, including navigating through a labyrinth of thorns and evading enchanted traps. Eventually, they reached a clearing where the heartstone was guarded by a massive stone golem. Using their combined skills, Aurora distracted the golem with her agility and bravery, while Thorn cast a spell to weaken its defenses. Selene approached the heartstone and with a touch of her hand, activated its healing powers. The golem, now freed from the dark magic, allowed them to take the heartstone. Returning to Silva, they used the heartstone to break the dark vines and restore the tree spirit's strength. Thank you, brave children, Silva said. I will restore the earth's magic and cleanse the whispering woods. Next, they traveled to the crystal caves where the guardian of water, a mermaid named Marina, was held captive. The caves were filled with dark magic and the crystal waters had turned murky. The siblings had to navigate through underwater tunnels and avoid enchanted sea creatures. Using his knowledge of ancient lore, Thorn deciphered the runes that guided them to Marina's location. They found her trapped in a whirlpool of dark magic. To free me and restore the water's magic, you must find the aqua flame crystal. Marina said, it is hidden in the deepest part of the caves, guarded by a sea serpent. The siblings swam deeper into the caves, guided by Skylar's sharp eyesight and Luna's ability to sense danger. They reached the chamber where the aqua flame crystal was guarded by a fearsome sea serpent. Aurora bravely fought the serpent while Thorn cast protective spells. Selene, with her calming presence, tamed the serpent and retrieved the crystal. With the aqua flame crystal in hand, they returned to Marina and used its power to break the whirlpool and free her. Thank you, brave children, Marina said. I will restore the water's magic and cleanse the crystal caves. Their next challenge was the Ember Mountains, where the guardian of fire, a phoenix named Ignis, was imprisoned. The mountains were treacherous, with rivers of lava and scorching heat. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the fiery landscape. They found Ignis trapped in a cage of dark flames. To free me and restore the fire's magic, you must find the flame flower, Ignis said. It is hidden in the heart of the volcano, guarded by a fire dragon. The siblings climbed the volcano, using their skills to avoid falling rocks and rivers of lava. They reached the chamber where the flame flower was guarded by a massive fire dragon. Aurora, with her bravery, distracted the dragon while Thorn cast protective spells. Selene, using her gift for calming creatures, soothed the dragon and retrieved the flame flower. Returning to Ignis, they used the flame flower to dispel the dark flames and free the phoenix. Thank you, brave children, Ignis said. I will restore the fire's magic and cleanse the Ember Mountains. Their final destination was the Sky Temple, a floating fortress where the guardian of air, a griffin named Zephyr, was held captive. The temple was protected by powerful winds and magical barriers. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the temple's defenses. They found Zephyr bound by chains of dark magic. To free me and restore the air's magic, you must find the windstone, Zephyr said. It is hidden in the highest tower, guarded by a storm giant. The siblings climbed the tower, using their skills to avoid lightning strikes and strong winds. They reached the chamber where the windstone was guarded by a towering storm giant. 
Aurora, with her agility, dodged the giant's attacks, while Thorn cast spells to weaken it. Selene, using her calming presence, tamed the giant and retrieved the windstone. Returning to Zephyr, they used the windstone to break the chains and free the griffin. Thank you, brave children, Zephyr said. I will restore the air's magic and cleanse the sky temple. With all four elements restored, the siblings returned to the sacred lake. The guardians of earth, water, fire, and air combined their powers to cleanse the lake and restore its magic. The lake's waters shimmered once more, and the land of Lumina flourished. The people of Lumina celebrated their return, praising their bravery and unity. King Cedric and Queen Alara embraced their children, proud of their accomplishments. The tale of their heroic quest spread throughout the land, becoming a legend that inspired generations. Princess Aurora, Prince Thorn, and Princess Selene continued to protect Lumina, always ready to face new challenges and adventures. Their bond grew stronger, and their love for their kingdom and its people only deepened. The sacred lake, now restored, ensured that Lumina would remain a land of beauty and magic. And so, Lumina thrived, a kingdom of endless wonder, where the magic of the sacred lake and the bravery of its heroes ensured peace and prosperity for all time. The End The Legend of the Golden Grove and the Guardians of Light Once upon a time, in a kingdom called Aurelia, there lay a magical forest known as the Golden Grove. This enchanted forest was famous for its golden-leaved trees that glowed under the sun and moon, creating a spectacle of light and wonder. At the heart of the Golden Grove stood the luminous tree, a majestic tree that was the source of all magic in Aurelia. Its branches bore luminescent fruits that granted wisdom, strength, and healing to those who sought its blessings. The kingdom was ruled by King Alistair and Queen Isold, who were wise and compassionate. They had three children, Princess Alara, Prince Cedric, and Princess Maya. Each of them possessed unique gifts that reflected their love for their kingdom and its people. Princess Alara, the eldest, was known for her bravery and combat skills. She was a protector of the realm and a natural leader. Prince Cedric, the middle child, was a scholar and a powerful magician with a deep understanding of ancient lore and spells. Princess Maya, the youngest, had a special connection with nature and could communicate with animals and plants. Her gentle heart and healing abilities made her beloved by all. One fateful day, a dark sorceress named Morgath sought to harness the power of the luminous tree for her own wicked purposes. She cast a terrible spell that caused the tree's light to dim and its magical fruits to wither. Without the luminous tree's magic, the Golden Grove and the entire kingdom of Aurelia began to lose its enchantment, and the people fell into despair. King Alistair and Queen Isolde called upon their children. Alara, Cedric, Maya, the king said with grave concern, the luminous tree has been corrupted by Morgath's dark magic. To save our kingdom, you must embark on a quest to restore its light and power. We will do everything in our power to save Aurelia, Alara vowed, her eyes filled with determination. Cedric nodded, already contemplating how to counter the dark magic. We will restore the luminous tree and bring peace back to our land, he said. Maya, her heart heavy with concern for the suffering creatures and people, added, we will heal the tree in our kingdom. Accompanied by their loyal companions, Alara's fierce griffin, Valor, Cedric's wise owl, Orion, and Maya's gentle fawn, Lila, they set off on their quest. Their first destination was the Whispering Woods, where the guardian of Earth, an ancient dryad named Silva, resided. The woods were thick with dark magic, and the trees whispered warnings of Morgath's power. As they ventured deeper, they encountered enchanted creatures twisted by the dark magic. Alara used her combat skills to protect her siblings, while Cedric cast spells to dispel the enchantments. Maya, with her gift for healing, soothed the creatures and restored them to their natural forms. At the heart of the woods, they found Silva, who was trapped in a cocoon of dark vines. To free me and restore the Earth's magic, you must find the Heartstone, Silva said. It is hidden deep within the forest, guarded by a powerful guardian. The siblings journeyed further into the forest, guided by Orion's keen senses. They faced numerous challenges, including navigating through a labyrinth of thorns and evading enchanted traps. Eventually, they reached a clearing where the heartstone was guarded by a massive stone golem. 
Using their combined skills, Alara distracted the golem with her agility and bravery, while Cedric cast a spell to weaken its defenses. Maya approached the heartstone and, with a touch of her hand, activated its healing powers. The golem, now freed from the dark magic, allowed them to take the heartstone. Returning to Silva, they used the heartstone to break the dark vines and restore the dryad's strength. Thank you, brave children, Silva said. I will restore the Earth's magic and cleanse the Whispering Woods. Next, they traveled to the Crystal Caves, where the Guardian of Water, a mermaid named Marina, was held captive. The caves were filled with dark magic, and the crystal waters had turned murky. The siblings had to navigate through underwater tunnels and avoid enchanted sea creatures. Using his knowledge of ancient lore, Cedric deciphered the runes that guided them to Marina's location. They found her trapped in a whirlpool of dark magic, to free me and restore the water's magic, you must find the aqua flame crystal, Marina said. It is hidden in the deepest part of the caves, guarded by a sea serpent. The siblings swam deeper into the caves, guided by Valor's sharp eyesight and Lila's ability to sense danger. They reached the chamber where the aqua flame crystal was guarded by a fearsome sea serpent. Alara bravely fought the serpent while Cedric cast protective spells. Maya, with her calming presence, tamed the serpent and retrieved the crystal. With the Aquaflame crystal in hand, they returned to Marina and used its power to break the whirlpool and free her. Thank you, brave children, Marina said. I will restore the water's magic and cleanse the crystal caves. Their next challenge was the Ember Mountains, where the Guardian of Fire, a phoenix named Ignis, was imprisoned. The mountains were treacherous, with rivers of lava and scorching heat. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the fiery landscape. They found Ignis trapped in a cage of dark flames. To free me and restore the fire's magic, you must find the flame flower, Ignis said. It is hidden in the heart of the volcano, guarded by a fire dragon. The siblings climbed the volcano, using their skills to avoid falling rocks and rivers of lava. They reached the chamber where the flame flower was guarded by a massive fire dragon. Alara, with her bravery, distracted the dragon while Cedric cast protective spells. Maya, using her gift for calming creatures, soothed the dragon and retrieved the flame flower. Returning to Ignis, they used the flame flower to dispel the dark flames and free the phoenix. Thank you, brave children, Ignis said. I will restore the fire's magic and cleanse the ember mountains. Their final destination was the Sky Temple, a floating fortress where the guardian of air, a griffin named Zephyr was held captive. The temple was protected by powerful winds and magical barriers. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the temple's defenses. They found Zephyr bound by chains of dark magic. To free me and restore the air's magic, you must find the windstone, Zephyr said. It is hidden in the highest tower, guarded by a storm giant. The siblings climbed the tower, using their skills to avoid lightning strikes and strong winds. They reached the chamber where the windstone was guarded by a towering storm giant. Alara, with her agility, dodged the giant's attacks while Cedric cast spells to weaken it. Maya, using her calming presence, tamed the giant and retrieved the windstone. Returning to Zephyr, they used the windstone to break the chains and free the griffin. Thank you, brave children, Zephyr said. I will restore the air's magic and cleanse the sky temple. With all four elements restored, the siblings returned to the luminous tree in the Golden Grove. The guardians of earth, water, fire, and air combined their powers to cleanse the tree and restore its magic. The tree's branches glowed once more, and its luminescent fruits began to shine brightly, bringing light and magic back to the land. The kingdom of Aurelia was saved, and the people rejoiced. King Alastair and Queen Isolde embraced their children, proud of their bravery and unity. The tale of their heroic quest spread throughout the land, becoming a legend that inspired generations. Princess Alara, Prince Cedric, and Princess Maya continued to protect Aurelia, always ready to face new challenges and adventures. Their bond grew stronger, and their love for their kingdom and its people only deepened. The luminous tree, now fully restored, ensured that the Golden Grove would remain a land of beauty and magic forever. And so, Aurelia thrived a kingdom of endless wonder, where the magic of the Golden Grove and the bravery of its heroes ensured peace and prosperity for all time. The End
The Legend of the Golden Grove and the Guardians of Light Once upon a time, in a kingdom called Aurelia, there lay a magical forest known as the Golden Grove. This enchanted forest was famous for its golden-leaved trees that glowed under the sun and moon, creating a spectacle of light and wonder. At the heart of the Golden Grove stood the luminous tree, a majestic tree that was the source of all magic in Aurelia. Its branches bore luminescent fruits that granted wisdom, strength, and healing to those who sought its blessings. The kingdom was ruled by King Alistair and Queen Isolde, who were wise and compassionate. They had three children, Princess Alara, Prince Cedric, and Princess Maya. Each of them possessed unique gifts that reflected their love for their kingdom and its people. Princess Alara, the eldest, was known for her bravery and combat skills. She was a protector of the realm and a natural leader. Prince Cedric, the middle child, was a scholar and a powerful magician with a deep understanding of ancient lore and spells. Princess Maya, the youngest, had a special connection with nature and could communicate with animals and plants. Her gentle heart and healing abilities made her beloved by all. One fateful day, a dark sorceress named Morgath sought to harness the power of the luminous tree for her own wicked purposes. She cast a terrible spell that caused the tree's light to dim and its magical fruits to wither. Without the luminous tree's magic, the golden grove and the entire kingdom of Aurelia began to lose its enchantment, and the people fell into despair. King Alistair and Queen Isolde called upon their children. Alara, Cedric, Maya, the king said with grave concern. The luminous tree has been corrupted by Morgath's dark magic. To save our kingdom, you must embark on a quest to restore its light and power. We will do everything in our power to save Aurelia, Alara vowed, her eyes filled with determination. Cedric nodded, already contemplating how to counter the dark magic. We will restore the luminous tree and bring peace back to our land, he said. Maya, her heart heavy with concern for the suffering creatures and people, added, we will heal the tree and our kingdom. Accompanied by their loyal companions, Elara's fierce griffin, Valor, Cedric's wise owl, Orion, and Maya's gentle fawn, Lila, they set off on their quest. Their first destination was the Whispering Woods, where the guardian of Earth, an ancient dryad named Silva, resided. The woods were thick with dark magic, and the trees whispered warnings of Morgath's power. As they ventured deeper, they encountered enchanted creatures, twisted by the dark magic. Alara used her combat skills to protect her siblings, while Cedric cast spells to dispel the enchantments. Maya, with her gift for healing, soothed the creatures and restored them to their natural forms. At the heart of the woods, they found Silva, who was trapped in a cocoon of dark vines. To free me and restore the Earth's magic, you must find the Heartstone, Silva said. It is hidden deep within the forest, guarded by a powerful guardian. The siblings journeyed further into the forest, guided by Orion's keen senses. They faced numerous challenges, including navigating through a labyrinth of thorns and evading enchanted traps. Eventually, they reached a clearing where the heartstone was guarded by a massive stone golem. Using their combined skills, Alara distracted the golem with her agility and bravery, while Cedric cast a spell to weaken its defenses. Maya approached the heartstone and with a touch of her hand, activated its healing powers. The golem, now freed from the dark magic, allowed them to take the heartstone. Returning to Silva, they used the heartstone to break the dark vines and restore the dryad's strength. Thank you, brave children, Silva said. I will restore the earth's magic and cleanse the whispering woods. Next, they traveled to the crystal caves where the guardian of water, a mermaid named Marina, was held captive. The caves were filled with dark magic and the crystal waters had turned murky. The siblings had to navigate through underwater tunnels and avoid enchanted sea creatures. Using his knowledge of ancient lore, Cedric deciphered the runes that guided them to Marina's location. They found her trapped in a whirlpool of dark magic. To free me and restore the water's magic, you must find the aqua flame crystal, Marina said. It is hidden in the deepest part of the caves guarded by a sea serpent. The siblings swam deeper into the caves, guided by Valor's sharp eyesight and Lila's ability to sense danger. They reached the chamber where the aqua flame crystal was guarded by a fearsome sea serpent. Alara bravely fought the serpent while Cedric cast protective spells. Maya, with her calming presence, 
tamed the serpent, and retrieved the crystal. With the Aquaflame crystal in hand, they returned to Marina and used its power to break the whirlpool and free her. Thank you, brave children, Marina said. I will restore the water's magic and cleanse the crystal caves. Their next challenge was the Ember Mountains, where the Guardian of Fire, a phoenix named Ignis, was imprisoned. The mountains were treacherous, with rivers of lava and scorching heat. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the fiery landscape. They found Ignis trapped in a cage of dark flames. To free me and restore the fire's magic, you must find the flame flower, Ignis said. It is hidden in the heart of the volcano, guarded by a fire dragon. The siblings climbed the volcano, using their skills to avoid falling rocks and rivers of lava. They reached the chamber where the flame flower was guarded by a massive fire dragon. Alara, with her bravery, distracted the dragon while Cedric cast protective spells. Maya, using her gift for calming creatures, soothed the dragon and retrieved the flame flower. Returning to Ignis, they used the flame flower to dispel the dark flames and free the phoenix. Thank you, brave children, Ignis said. I will restore the fire's magic and cleanse the ember mountains. Their final destination was the Sky Temple, a floating fortress where the guardian of air, a griffin named Zephyr, was held captive. The temple was protected by powerful winds and magical barriers. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the temple's defenses. They found Zephyr bound by chains of dark magic. To free me and restore the air's magic, you must find the Windstone, Zephyr said. It is hidden in the highest tower, guarded by a storm giant. The siblings climbed the tower, using their skills to avoid lightning strikes and strong winds. They reached the chamber where the windstone was guarded by a towering storm giant. Alara, with her agility, dodged the giant's attacks, while Cedric cast spells to weaken it. Maya, using her calming presence, tamed the giant and retrieved the windstone. Returning to Zephyr, they used the windstone to break the chains and free the griffin. Thank you, brave children, Zephyr said. I will restore the air's magic and cleanse the Sky Temple. With all four elements restored, the siblings returned to the luminous tree in the Golden Grove. The guardians of earth, water, fire, and air combined their powers to cleanse the tree and restore its magic. The tree's branches glowed once more, and its luminescent fruits began to shine brightly, bringing light and magic back to the land. The kingdom of Aurelia was saved, and the people rejoiced. King Alistair and Queen Isolde embraced their children, proud of their bravery and unity. The tale of their heroic quest spread throughout the land, becoming a legend that inspired generations. Princess Alara, Prince Cedric, and Princess Maya continued to protect Aurelia, always ready to face new challenges and adventures. Their bond grew stronger, and their love for their kingdom and its people only deepened. The luminous tree, now fully restored, ensured that the Golden Grove would remain a land of beauty and magic forever. And so, Aurelia thrived, a kingdom of endless wonder, where the magic of the Golden Grove and the bravery of its heroes ensured peace and prosperity for all time. The End, The Secret of the Starry Isle Once upon a time, in the magical kingdom of Eldoria, there lay a hidden isle known as the Starry Isle. This mystical island was said to be a place where the stars touched the earth, and the night sky was so clear that the stars shone like brilliant gems scattered across a velvet blanket. The heart of the Starry Isle was the Celestial Fountain, a legendary source of magic that could grant wisdom, strength, and healing to those who drank from it. The kingdom was ruled by King Cedric and Queen Alara, who were wise and kind-hearted rulers, beloved by their people. They had three children, Princess Aurora, Prince Edmund, and Princess Selene. Each of them possessed unique gifts that reflected their love for the kingdom and its people. Princess Aurora, the eldest, was a brave warrior known for her strength and courage. She was always ready to defend the kingdom from any threat. Prince Edmund, the middle child, was a brilliant scholar and magician with a deep understanding of ancient lore and spells. His intellect and curiosity made him the kingdom's foremost expert on magical phenomena. Princess Selene, the youngest, had a special connection with nature and the stars. She could communicate with animals and had a natural gift for healing. One fateful day, a dark sorceress named Morgath sought to harness the power of the celestial fountain for her own sinister purposes. 
she cast a terrible spell that caused the fountain's waters to dry up and its magic to fade. Without the fountain's magic, the Starry Isle began to wither, and the kingdom of Eldoria fell into despair. King Cedric and Queen Alara summoned their children to the royal hall. Aurora, Edmund, Selene, the king said with grave concern, the celestial fountain has been corrupted by Morgath's dark magic. To save our kingdom, you must embark on a quest to restore its magic. We will do everything in our power to save Eldoria, Aurora vowed, her eyes filled with determination. Edmund nodded, already contemplating how to counter the dark magic. We will restore the celestial fountain and bring peace back to our land, he said. Selene, her heart heavy with concern for the suffering creatures and people, added, We will heal the Starry Isle and our kingdom. Accompanied by their loyal companions, Aurora's fierce falcon, Sky, Edmund's wise owl, Orion, and Selene's gentle fawn, Luna, they set off on their quest. Their first destination was the Whispering Woods, where the guardian of Earth, an ancient dryad named Thalia, resided. The woods were thick with dark magic, and the trees whispered warnings of Morgath's power. As they ventured deeper, they encountered enchanted creatures twisted by the dark magic. Aurora used her combat skills to protect her siblings, while Edmund cast spells to dispel the enchantments. Selene, with her gift for healing, soothed the creatures and restored them to their natural forms. At the heart of the woods, they found Thalia, who was trapped in a cocoon of dark vines. To free me and restore the Earth's magic, you must find the Heartstone, Thalia said. It is hidden deep within the forest, guarded by a powerful guardian. The siblings journeyed further into the forest, guided by Orion's keen senses. They faced numerous challenges, including navigating through a labyrinth of thorns and evading enchanted traps. Eventually, they reached a clearing where the Heartstone was guarded by a massive stone golem. Using their combined skills, Aurora distracted the golem with her agility and bravery, while Edmund cast a spell to weaken its defenses. Selene approached the Heartstone and, with a touch of her hand, activated its healing powers. The golem, now freed from the dark magic, allowed them to take the Heartstone. Returning to Thalia, they used the Heartstone to break the dark vines and restore the dryad's strength. Thank you, brave children, Thalia said. I will restore the Earth's magic and cleanse the Whispering Woods. Next, they traveled to the Crystal Caves, where the Guardian of Water, a mermaid named Marina, was held captive. The caves were filled with dark magic, and the crystal waters had turned murky. The siblings had to navigate through underwater tunnels and avoid enchanted sea creatures. Using his knowledge of ancient lore, Edmund deciphered the runes that guided them to Marina's location. They found her trapped in a whirlpool of dark magic. To free me and restore the water's magic, you must find the aqua flame crystal. Marina said, It is hidden in the deepest part of the caves, guarded by a sea serpent. The siblings swam deeper into the caves, guided by Sky's sharp eyesight and Luna's ability to sense danger. They reached the chamber where the aqua flame crystal was guarded by a fearsome sea serpent. Aurora bravely fought the serpent, while Edmund cast protective spells. Selene, with her calming presence, tamed the serpent and retrieved the crystal. With the aqua flame crystal in hand, they returned to Marina and used its power to break the whirlpool and free her. Thank you, brave children, Marina said. I will restore the water's magic and cleanse the crystal caves. Their next challenge was the Ember Mountains, where the guardian of fire, a phoenix named Ignis, was imprisoned. The mountains were treacherous, with rivers of lava and scorching heat. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the fiery landscape. They found Ignis trapped in a cage of dark flames. To free me and restore the fire's magic, you must find the flame flower, Ignis said. It is hidden in the heart of the volcano, guarded by a fire dragon. The siblings climbed the volcano, using their skills to avoid falling rocks and rivers of lava. They reached the chamber where the flame flower was guarded by a massive fire dragon. Aurora, with her bravery, distracted the dragon, while Edmund cast protective spells. Selene, using her gift for calming creatures, soothed the dragon and retrieved the flame flower. Returning to Ignis, they used the flame flower to dispel the dark flames and free the phoenix. Thank you, brave children, Ignis said. I will restore the fire's magic and cleanse the Ember Mountains. Their next destination was the Sky Temple, 
a floating fortress where the guardian of air, a griffin named Zephyr, was held captive. The temple was protected by powerful winds and magical barriers. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the temple's defenses. They found Zephyr bound by chains of dark magic. To free me and restore the air's magic, you must find the windstone, Zephyr said. It is hidden in the highest tower, guarded by a storm giant. The siblings climbed the tower, using their skills to avoid lightning strikes and strong winds. They reached the chamber where the windstone was guarded by a towering storm giant. Aurora, with her agility, dodged the giant's attacks, while Edmund cast spells to weaken it. Selene, using her calming presence, tamed the giant and retrieved the windstone. Returning to Zephyr, they used the windstone to break the chains and free the griffin. Thank you, brave children, Zephyr said. I will restore the air's magic and cleanse the Sky Temple. Their final challenge was to retrieve the light, shadow, and spirit shards, which had fallen in the Twilight Grove, a mysterious forest where day and night blended together. The grove was filled with illusions and shadows, and the siblings had to rely on their instincts and each other to navigate through it. At the heart of the grove, they found Luminara, the guardian of light, trapped in a web of shadows. To free me and restore the balance of light and darkness, you must find the Lumina crystal, the shadow orb, and the spirit gem, Luminara said. They are hidden within the grove, guarded by powerful beings. The siblings ventured deeper into the grove, guided by Orion's wisdom and Luna's ability to sense magic. They faced numerous challenges, including battling shadow creatures and solving ancient puzzles. They retrieved the Lumina Crystal from a Guardian of Light, the Shadow Orb from a Guardian of Darkness, and, and the Spirit Gem from a Guardian of Spirits. Returning to Luminara, they used the artifacts to break the web of shadows and restore the balance of light and darkness. Thank you, brave children, Luminara said. I will return to the Celestial Fountain and restore its magic. With all seven shards in hand, the siblings returned to the Starry Isle. The Guardians of Earth, Water, fire, air, light, shadow, and spirit combined their powers to restore the celestial fountain. The fountain's waters began to flow once more, and its magic spread throughout the land, bringing life and light back to Solaria. The kingdom of Solaria was saved, and the people rejoiced. King Cedric and Queen Alara embraced their children, proud of their bravery and unity. The tale of their heroic quests spread throughout the land, becoming a legend that inspired generations. Princess Aurora, Prince Edmund, and Princess Selene continued to protect Solaria, always ready to face new challenges and adventures. Their bond grew stronger, and their love for their kingdom and its people only deepened. The Celestial Fountain, now fully restored, ensured that the Starry Isle would remain a place of beauty and magic forever. And so, Solaria thrived, a kingdom of endless wonder, where the magic of the Celestial Fountain and the bravery of its heroes ensured peace and prosperity for all time. The End Tashap, the Enchanted Tapestry of Fablewood Once upon a time, in the heart of a mystical kingdom called Fablewood, there lay a grand castle surrounded by lush forests, rolling hills, and sparkling rivers. This kingdom was renowned for its enchanted tapestry, a magical artifact that depicted the kingdom's history and future in vibrant, living images. The tapestry was woven with threads of pure magic and was believed to protect the kingdom from harm. The kingdom was ruled by King Theron and Queen Lysandra, who were beloved by their people for their wisdom and kindness. They had three children, Princess Eliana, Prince Kale, and Princess Mira. Each child possessed unique talents and qualities that reflected their love for the kingdom and its people. Princess Eliana, the eldest, was a skilled warrior and strategist. Her bravery and leadership were unmatched, and she was always ready to defend the kingdom. Prince Kale, the middle child, was a brilliant scholar and magician with a deep understanding of ancient lore and spells. His intellect and curiosity made him the kingdom's foremost expert on magical phenomena. Princess Mira, the youngest, had a special connection with nature and the arts. She could communicate with animals and plants and had a natural gift for music and healing. One fateful day, a dark sorcerer named Malachar sought to unravel the enchantment of the tapestry and bring chaos to Fablewood. He cast a sinister spell that caused the threads of the tapestry to fray and its images to fade. Without the tapestry's magic, 
the kingdom began to fall into disarray, and the people of Fablewood were filled with despair. King Theron and Queen Lysandra called upon their children to save the kingdom. Eliana, Kale, Mira, the king said with grave concern, the enchanted tapestry has been corrupted by Malachar's dark magic. To save our kingdom, you must embark on a quest to restore its magic. We will do everything in our power to save Fablewood, Eliana vowed, her eyes filled with determination. Kale nodded, already contemplating how to counter the dark magic. We will restore the tapestry and bring peace back to our land, he said. Mira, her heart heavy with concern for the suffering creatures and people, added, We will heal the tapestry and our kingdom. Accompanied by their loyal companions, Eliana's fierce wolf, Shadow, Kale's wise owl, Athena, and Mira's gentle deer, Lyra, they set off on their quest. Their first destination was the Whispering Woods, where the loom of earth was hidden. This loom held the magic to weave the earthly elements back into the tapestry. The woods were thick with dark magic, and the trees whispered warnings of Malachar's power. As they ventured deeper, they encountered enchanted creatures twisted by the dark magic. Eliana used her combat skills to protect her siblings, while Kale cast spells to dispel the enchantments. Mira, with her gift for healing, soothed the creatures and restored them to their natural forms. At the heart of the woods, they found Thalia, the guardian of Earth, who was trapped in a cocoon of dark vines. To free me and restore the Earth's magic, you must find the Heartstone, Thalia said. It is hidden deep within the forest, guarded by a powerful guardian. The siblings journeyed further into the forest, guided by Athena's keen senses. They faced numerous challenges, including navigating through a labyrinth of thorns and evading enchanted traps. Eventually, they reached a clearing where the Heartstone was guarded by a massive stone golem. Using their combined skills, Eliana distracted the golem with her agility and bravery, while Kale cast a spell to weaken its defenses. Mira approached the Heartstone, and with a touch of her hand, activated its healing powers. The golem, now freed from the dark magic, allowed them to take the Heartstone. Returning to Thalia, they used the Heartstone to break the dark vines and restore the Dryad's strength. Thank you, brave children, Thalia said. I will restore the Earth's magic and weave it back into the tapestry. Next, they traveled to the Crystal Caves, where the Loom of Water was hidden. This loom held the magic to weave the water elements back into the tapestry. The caves were filled with dark magic, and the crystal waters had turned murky. The siblings had to navigate through underwater tunnels and avoid enchanted sea creatures. Using his knowledge of ancient lore, Kale deciphered the runes that guided them to Marina, the guardian of water, who was trapped in a whirlpool of dark magic. To free me and restore the water's magic, you must find the Aquaflame Crystal, Marina said. It is hidden in the deepest part of the caves, guarded by a sea serpent. The siblings swam deeper into the caves, guided by Shadow's sharp eyesight and Lyra's ability to sense danger. They reached the chamber where the Aquaflame Crystal was guarded by a fearsome sea serpent. Eliana bravely fought the serpent while Kale cast protective spells. Mira, with her calming presence, tamed the serpent and retrieved the crystal. With the Aquaflame Crystal in hand, they returned to Marina and used its power to break the whirlpool and free her. Thank you, brave children, Marina said. I will restore the water's magic and weave it back into the tapestry. Their next challenge was the Ember Mountains, where the Loom of Fire was hidden. This loom held the magic to weave the fire elements back into the tapestry. The mountains were treacherous, with rivers of lava and scorching heat. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the fiery landscape. They found Ignis, the guardian of fire, trapped in a cage of dark flames. To free me and restore the fire's magic, you must find the flame flower, Ignis said. It is hidden in the heart of the volcano, guarded by a fire dragon. The siblings climbed the volcano, using their skills to avoid falling rocks and rivers of lava. They reached the chamber where the flame flower was guarded by a massive fire dragon. Eliana, with her bravery, distracted the dragon while Kale cast protective spells. Mira, using her gift for calming creatures, soothed the dragon and retrieved the flame flower. Returning to Ignis, they used the flame flower to dispel the dark flames and free the phoenix. Thank you, brave children, Ignis said. 
I will restore the fire's magic and weave it back into the tapestry. Their next destination was the Sky Temple, a floating fortress where the loom of air was hidden. This loom held the magic to weave the air elements back into the tapestry. The temple was protected by powerful winds and magical barriers. Using their combined abilities, they navigated through the temple's defenses. They found Zephyr, the guardian of air, bound by chains of dark magic. To free me and restore the air's magic, you must find the windstone, Zephyr said. It is hidden in the highest tower, guarded by a storm giant. The siblings climbed the tower, using their skills to avoid lightning strikes and strong winds. They reached the chamber where the windstone was guarded by a towering storm giant. Eliana, with her agility, dodged the giant's attacks, while Kale cast spells to weaken it. Mira, using her calming presence, tamed the giant and retrieved the windstone. Returning to Zephyr, they used the windstone to break the chains and free the griffin. Thank you, brave children, Zephyr said. I will restore the air's magic and weave it back into the tapestry. Their final challenge was to retrieve the light, shadow, and spirit looms, which had fallen in the Twilight Grove, a mysterious forest where day and night blended together. The grove was filled with illusions and shadows, and the siblings had to rely on their instincts and each other to navigate through it. At the heart of the grove, they found Luminara, the guardian of light, trapped in a web of shadows. To free me and restore the balance of light and darkness, you must find the Lumina Crystal, the Shadow Orb, and the Spirit Gem, Luminara said. They are hidden within the grove, guarded by powerful beings. The siblings ventured deeper into the grove, guided by Athena's wisdom and Lyra's ability to sense magic. They faced numerous challenges, including battling shadow creatures and solving ancient puzzles. They retrieved the Lumina Crystal from a Guardian of Light, the Shadow Orb from a Guardian of Darkness, and the Spirit Gem from a Guardian of Spirits. Returning to Luminara, they used the artifacts to break the web of shadows and restore the balance of light and darkness. Thank you, brave children, Luminara said. I will return to the Celestial Fountain and restore its magic. With all the looms and artifacts in hand, the siblings returned to the Grand Castle of Fablewood. The guardians of Earth, water, fire, air, light, shadow, and spirit combined their powers to restore the enchanted tapestry. The tapestry's threads glowed with brilliant light, and its images came to life once more, bringing magic and harmony back to Fablewood. The kingdom of Fablewood was saved, and the people rejoiced. King Theron and Queen Lysandra embraced their children, proud of their bravery and unity. The tale of their heroic quest spread throughout the land, becoming a legend that inspired generations. Princess Aeliana, Prince Kale, and Princess Mira continued to protect Fablewood, always ready to face new challenges and adventures. Their bond grew stronger, and their love for their kingdom and its people only deepened. The enchanted tapestry, now fully restored, ensured that Fablewood would remain a land 